This is Math 139, Section 2.4c. So we've seen how to find the rational zeros using the rational zeros theorem. But we've also seen that we aren't in general finding all the zeros we expect using this process. The way to find more is to be using a division process. Once we've found a rational zero r, we're going to divide our original polynomial by the associated factor, x minus r. That will result in a smaller polynomial, a lower degree, that we can continue to work with. All right, so here was the example. Again, we've started this already. x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 2. And just a little bit at the end of the last video, we discovered that x equals 2 was the only rational zero for that function. So we're starting with the rational zero that we already found, x equals 2. Since x equals 2 is a 0, x minus 2 would have to be a factor, right? If you set that equal to 0, you'd get x equal 2. So we're going to go ahead and divide that known factor into our original polynomial. If you're comfortable with synthetic division, I'll just note that you can do this by synthetic division fairly quickly. This does fit the proper format. But I'll go ahead and do long division since we didn't require the synthetic. Dividing x cubed by x gives me x squared. And multiplying, x cubed minus 2x squared. I'm subtracting negative positive. 0x cubes, 3x squared. Bring down the minus 5x and the minus 2. 3x squared divided by x is a positive 3x. Multiplying 3x squared minus 6x. Subtracting, so negative here, positive there, gives us 1x minus 2. x divided by x is 1, plus 1. 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2. And subtracting, we get a remainder of 0. If we found a true rational root, a true rational 0, it should come out evenly with no remainder every time. Otherwise, we've done something wrong. All right. So I now have this smaller degree polynomial. We essentially now know that our original polynomial really factors using the x minus 2 and the quotient that we just found. So either x minus 2 equals 0 or x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. That gives me the x equals 2, which we already knew. And this one, I don't think we're going to be able to factor that. So I think we'll have to use a quadratic formula to finish up. Opposite of b would be negative 3. Plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. Under the radical, 3, or excuse me, 9 minus 4 would be 5 over 2. And I don't think I can reduce anything, so that's it. There are the three answers that we would expect from a third degree polynomial equation x equals 2, and then with the plus and the minus, two more irrational solutions there. All right, so basically the rational zeros are getting used to kind of knock down the degree so that we can use the techniques that we already know. Let's try it again with the other one that we've already analyzed for rational zeros, the fourth degree polynomial. This one 
had x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 thirds that we already knew were rational zeros. We're going to go ahead and divide each one of those, one at a time, into our original polynomial to see if we can once again reduce the degree until we can get perhaps hopefully a quadratic. Because once we have a quadratic, we always can solve. I'm going to start with the negative 1. And this was a bit larger of a polynomial, so I'm going to go ahead and use my synthetic division this time. If you didn't learn that, you're certainly welcome to go ahead and do it with long division instead. I'm going to use that negative 1, though, by synthetic division. And I have 3, 1, 10, 4, and negative 8 are my coefficients. Bring down the 3, and then it's multiply and add. Multiply to negative 3, add them to get negative 2. Multiply here, that's positive 2 add them to get 12. Multiply to negative 12, add to negative 8, and multiply to positive 8, add to get 0. Remember the last uh, number is always your remainder, and it should be 0 since this was truly a 0 of the polynomial. It should come out evenly. All right, this is now a cubic polynomial, but really, if I'm doing synthetic division, I don't even need to pause. I can just go ahead and go to my two-thirds, my other rational zero, and divide it into what's left here. Bring down the 3 to get started, and then we multiply. 3 times 2 thirds is 2 add to 0. Multiplying again is 0, add to 12, and multiplying 2 thirds times 12 is 8, which adds up to 0. Again, a remainder of 0 is exactly what we would expect. So let's see what we've got left here. The 12 is our constant term. There would be a 0x to the first, and then a 3x squared. So at this point, in addition to the two zeros that I already found, I would have 3x squared plus 12 equal to 0. I think I can solve this one by the square root method. Let's subtract off the 12, and then divide by the 3. So x squared is negative 4, and x would be plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which is plus or minus 2i. So once again, I think we found four solutions for our fourth degree, which is exactly what we expected. We already had the negative 1 and the 2 thirds from the rational zeros, and then we've got 2i and negative 2i, imaginary zeros that came out of the process. All right, this is a somewhat lengthy process. I won't deny this to go all the way from start to finish. So let's do one problem all the way through without kind of knowing anything ahead of time. We have another fourth degree polynomial here. And again, I'll start by finding rational zeros. This one we don't have any background done, so we're going to have to start from scratch. So rational zeros. P over Q would have the form. P would be factors of the 20, or negative 20. 
which would be, and I'm going to start using plus or minus here, plus or minus 1 times 20, 2 times 10, again, both plus or minus. Need some more space here. Uh, and 4 times 5, plus or minus 4 times plus or minus 5. And I think that's all of them. Q has to divide the leading coefficient. So factors of 2 would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. So the candidates, the possible rational zeros, would look like dividing everything by 1 is going to leave it exactly the way it is. And then dividing everything by 2, we're going to get some repeats. When I do, I won't bother to list them again. So first of all, 1 divided by 2, that's not a repeat, plus or minus a half. 20 divided by 2 is 10, and I've already got that in my list. 2 divided by 2 is 1, I've already got that in my list. 10 divided by 2 is 5, I've already got that. 4 divided by 2 is 2, got that. And then finally, 5 divided by 2 we don't have yet. So plus or minus 5 halves. We will test those. And I'm only going to write down the ones that actually work. But just a reminder, we take the x values, the possible rational zeros, and we plug them back into our original function, which I'll call f of x, and see which ones really do give us 0 as an outcome. So we'll put a new y in, our function this time. And in my table, I will start with plus and minus 1, no zeros. Plus and minus 20, no zeros. Plus and minus 2. Ah, both of those gave me zeros. So I'll jot those down. 2 gave 0. Negative 2 gave 0. All right, let's keep going. 10 and negative, oops, I've got to go back up to the top because it's starting to cut me off here. 10 and negative 10, no zeros. 4 and negative 4, also no zeros. 5 is no good. 1 half and negative 1 half, also no zeros. Oops, sorry, I already did the one half. Uh, five halves, that's what we need last. Five halves and negative five halves. Also no zeros. So there we go. Two and negative two turned out to be the only zeros of this polynomial. That means that x minus two and x plus two times something else would be the factored form here. To figure out what happens when I factor out or divide out the x minus 2 and the x plus 2, we'll go ahead and divide our original polynomial. And once again, this is so large, I'm just going to use synthetic division. But do feel free, if you'd rather to use the long division, that's fine. Let's see here. I'll start with the 2. And I'm just going to copy down all of my coefficients. And here we go. Bring down the 2, multiply to 4. Adds up to 2, multiplies to 4. Adds up to 1, multiplies to 2. Adds up to 10, multiplies to 20. 
and there's that remainder of zero that I expected. My other rational zero was negative two, and I'm just going to use what I have left down here, the result, and divide again. Bring down the two to start, multiply and get negative four, adds up to negative two. Multiply and get positive four, adds up to five. Multiply and get negative ten, adds up to zero. Once again, the remainder zero is what we expect. If we don't get it, we're in trouble. We wouldn't have found a true rational zero. All right, so what have we got here? Five plus a negative two x to the first and a positive two x squared. There's the new factored form of my original equation. And we've already said with the x minus 2, we get an answer of x equals 2. And from the x plus 2, we get an answer of negative 2. No surprises there. This one, though, is going to give us something to work with. 2x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. And I'm going to use my quadratic formula on that. The opposite of negative 2 would be 2. Plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared. Minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 5, over 2 times a. Let's see, under my radical, I've got 4 minus 40 would be negative 36. 4 at the bottom. And with the negative, that's not just 6, it's 6i. Uh, let's see, all of those are divisible by 2, so I can go ahead and do that. Divide by 2 over 2, top and bottom. Same thing, so I'm really dividing by a form of 1. That'll make that a 1, plus or minus 3i over 2. Or again, with the imaginary answers, we usually like to separate them out as a real part and an imaginary part. So 1 half, plus or minus 3 halves, times i. There we go, one, two, three, and four solutions for our fourth degree polynomial equation.